Hello everybody, welcome back to another super easy video on concrete analysis. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about T-beams again, but I remember talking in the last video saying that we were going to follow up with uh, another problem. And in that last video, if you want to recall, for analyzing T-beams, you have two different scenarios where you can have your neutral axis landing in the flange where the compression block will only be within that flange area. But in this scenario, you are going to have problems where the neutral axis and the compression block can land in your flange and also parts of your web, which means that you need to think about the problem a little bit differently than how we analyzed it before. Why is that? That's because the location of your centroidal axis for your compression block will not be directly at the center of a rectangular shape because this shape if you remember previous structural uh, strength of material videos, this is now considered a composite where you have two different shapes that are making up uh, one shape for analysis, meaning that there's a little bit more of a complex uh, formula to follow in order to figure out where that centroidal axis is. Why is that centroid important? It's important because you gotta know where your uh, resultant compressive force is acting in that compressive block. And that's kind of the whole fundamental uh, process of solving for moment resistance in these T-beams. But without overcomplicating it at the start, let's just hop into the problem and see what we're dealing with. We have a typical cross-section properly reinforced, and it's a T-beam, and it gives us that we have eight 30M bars in the bottom tensile face and an effective depth of 600 mil. And it wants us to determine the factored moment resistance, and it gives us all of our design variables and we're gonna see how this problem differs uh, from the previous one that we did. So as we already know, we should start by just determining what our area of steel is. And for this case, we have eight bars and they are 30 Ms. 30 M bars are 700 millimeters squared per bar, meaning that our total area of steel is gonna be 5,600 millimeters squared. Now, how can we proceed? We should proceed with determining what our tensile resistance is because we have all the known uh, design variables for this and we can then go ahead and figure out what the uh, a value would be uh, using this tr value and we're going to see that in a bit so tr is phi s which is 0 0.85 times our area of steel times our yield strength for properly reinforced members for 400 and then equals to 1,904 kilonewtons. And now we're gonna assume, once again, we're assuming that our BF is gonna be our B value when we're solving this A formula. And I'm gonna recall uh, the formula right here. It's TR over alpha one, phi C, FC prime, B. And that B value, it's going to be BF as our initial assumption. Why is that? Because we are assuming at first that the neutral axis and the compressive block are going to be in our flange alone. And in order for that condition to be met, this value of A has to be less than 100. So let's plug in our values and see if that's actually the case. So we have 1904 times 10 to the 3. It's going to be newtons. And this is all over. We got 0. 0.8 times 0 0.65 times our compressive strength, newton millimeter squared, times the B value, which is BF, 110 millimeters. All this stuff's going to cancel out and leave you with a millimeter value where A is equal to 133 millimeters, which is less than 100 mil, or sorry, <laughs> which is greater than 100 mil. What does that mean? That means we are somewhere inside of this web area now. So we can't proceed as we did in our previous problem. We have to figure out some new values to determine where this central uh, location is in our compressive block. So let's figure out how we're gonna do that by first solving for the required concrete area of this compressive block. So first things first, we're gonna solve for the area of concrete as we already mentioned. And why is this important? This area of concrete is important because then we can start to determine what our A value would be 
for this respective area of concrete, and then break that down even further to figure out what the centroidal axis would be located at uh, for this uh, composite shape. So we're going to start first with the area of concrete. And this formula is simply derived from that previous A uh, formula that we used before. Uh, it's just simplifying that A times B into a singular uh, variable for area, right? So all we're doing is just plugging into that formula up top. So we have 0 0.85 times the yield strength times the area of steel, which we saw for previously as 5,600. And then on the bottom, we are going to have 0 0.8 times 0 0.65 times 25. And then solving for that, you're left with a value of 1,000 or 146,461 millimeters squared. You can work out the units as well if you want to uh, take a look at that. Uh, I just want to save some space. It's a little bit tight uh, on this page here. Uh, the next thing we should do is start thinking about what this area of concrete actually represents. So how can we calculate it? Area of concrete for our compressive block will be a combination of the area of the flange plus the area of the web. So the area of the flange is fairly easy. That's just going to be the height of the flange times the length of that tributary area of that flange, which is 1,100 for our case. And then that thickness is 100. But the area of the web is a little bit different. We have this A prime value that is referencing the absolute uh, end or the start, if you want to think about it, of your compressive uh, block assumption. And then you're taking away the height of the flange, so you're only left with this dark red area. Then you're multiplying that times the width of your web, which is 300. So let's see how we would solve for this area of concrete here and rearrange it so that we can get this A prime. Well, it's already done here <laughs> if you want to take a look at that. But this is the formula uh, that we're going to be using but we can solve for some of the variables that we are looking for first. One of those would be the area of your flange. So that's going to look something like this. You have 1,100 times 100, which leaves you with this number here, 110,000. That's millimeters squared. And then you're simply plugging into this formula that has been rearranged to figure out what this A prime value is. So A prime going to equal to your area of concrete total, 461 minus 1,000, oh, geez, I am stumbling here, 110,000 millimeters squared. That's all over your B value, which is your width of your web. So 300, and we're adding 100, which leaves you with a value of 222 millimeters. And this a prime, once again, is the total depth of your compressive block region. Now we can go ahead and start figuring out where the centroid of your compressive block is. And that's simply using formulas that we've looked at previously in centroid for composite videos. So the formula goes as follows. You have the area of each segment times the centroidal uh, location over the total area of your composite. And that's exactly what's going on here. You start with your area of flange. The centroid of that is going to be at HF over 2, so 100 over 2 in our case. And then you have the area of the web, which is this dark red block that we've been talking about. Then the location of that, this is still a rectangular shape. So we know it's going to be half of whatever uh, this total length is. In order to get that, we first need to consider the distance from the reference axis, which is the top of our uh, flange. We're taking HF, and then we're figuring out what the what half of this would be, which would be A prime minus HF. So that's the entire length of this, then dividing it by two. Then our total area is right at the bottom. Okay, hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at the formulas here. We have AW, which is going to be 222 two, two minus 100. So that's A prime minus the height of your flange. And then we have the width of your web, which is 300. This leaves you with 3, 36,300 millimeters.
meter squared. And then you're simply plugging into this formula to get your A bar value, which is where that centroid is located for your composite. Got a little bit messy at the bottom, but the final value you get for A bar is going to be 78 millimeters. And you're going to notice that this formula for MR has now changed slightly because the value that we just calculated is the centroid of your comp compressive block. It's not the entire depth of it anymore. So you don't need to do A over 2 for this formula. You just need to do D minus A bar, and that will be the equivalent uh, couple arm for TR uh, and CR. Okay, so let's take this value and plug it into our MR formula. Alrighty. We have a bar. Let's simply plug into our formula. We know that it's going to be phi s a s f y times d minus a bar. We know what this value is already. This is t r. So all of that is going to be 1904 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And then we have the d value, which is given as 600. And we're subtracting a bar. Super simple stuff. That value is going to be in millimeters. And solving that and converting to kilonewton meters is going to leave you with 994 kilonewton meter for your MR value. And that is it for this uh, T beam problem. Very similar to the previous one, but you just need to think a little bit harder about what's going on with the uh, compressive block uh, and where that centroid is. So I uh, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.